The FileMaker of today provides developers with a wealth of tools to craft rich and polished solutions. It's never been a better time to focus on the user experience of your solutions. One of these layout tools is the slide control. Using slide controls, the developer can take the user on a journey, exposing only the elements required to make that current decision. A key component of UX is reducing the cognitive load. Hello, my name is Darren Southern. My company is Cadence UX, and we're based in Melbourne, Australia. With over 20 years experience in graphic art, and over 15 years as a Claris FileMaker developer, I believe I have the unique experience to deliver great looking and elegant solutions. Traveling over to the US each year for the conference has allowed me to connect in person with the whole community and has established many long-term friendships. And this photo from the conference in Texas, well, let's just say that nobody expected an Aussie to bring the heat to the pitching mound. I'm also one of the admins for the FileMaker bike team. Each year we organize bicycling rides as a social activity for the conference. I'd like you to leave this session aware. Aware of your surroundings, aware of how everyday items perform, and particularly how your software delivers UX. Before we begin, let's ask ourselves, what is UX? Search the internet and you'll find many blogs discussing this image. It's supposed to be a comparison of user interface and user experience. Both these models have their own UX. The main difference being the one on the right solves one big problem of the bottle on the left, how to get that last 20% of the tomato sauce out of the bottle. And both of these bottles have their own UI. There's actually a very similar UI to both bottles. If we look at the history of the bottle, now we see the full story. The bottle has taken over 130 years to transition from glass to the upside down plastic bottle that we use today. UI is the look and feel, the colour of all the items that are visible, the size of each of the elements, how each item is aligned to the other elements. This includes how close each item is to the other. Let's not forget the font choice. UX is the usability. UX includes everything mentioned that is part of the UI. The performance is a measure of how long tasks take. As mentioned earlier, the rhythm or the cadence of the presentation of data and actions. Emotion is an often overlooked factor in any design. Cognitive load refers to the amount of thinking required to perform the current task. This presentation is based on a real-world client solution to allow auditing to take place in the field with iPads. As you can see by the numbers, the solution needs to allow the auditor to make a clear, concise choice from a combination of the audit and the auditee. The auditee can be a person, location, vehicle, even a company subcontracting on behalf of the client. This iPad solution presents the filtering of each item on a separate slide control. At any one time, there may be more than a thousand active personnel of possible auditees. This is made more complicated that currently there are over 10 active personnel with the first name Matt from anywhere across Australia. There's actually a few personnel with the same first and last names. To speed up the selection of the right personnel, we take the auditor through a filtering process to reduce the choices. As the auditor has authenticated, we can pre-fill their company, division, area, based on their personal profile. It's also part of the business logic that most of the time they are auditing their own division and area. As part of this presentation, I've published the demo file for you to download and explore. Point your browser to my website and navigate to the blog section. If you like, pause this presentation Go download the demo file and come back and explore while you watch. This demo file comes with a small number of scripts. Each script performs a clear, simple function. It's also worth considering your own user experience as a developer 
wanting to review or troubleshoot your code in the future. The onopen script has been applied to this file. As you can see, the object animation script step has been set to off. The focus of this demo is the slide control, rather than the animations that aren't currently consistent across platforms. The screenshot shows the pause for the first five tabs at half a second. You can experiment with different values based on the speed that you wish to progress through these introduction tabs. You also notice that the last tab has a longest pause to allow the user to read the text on the screen. The last slide control of the introduction layout waits for the continue button to be pressed. The function to record the keyboard keystrokes has been applied to allow the keyboard interaction. This is the main script for the audio selection section. The selection scripts have been set up with separate if statements for each question, including an exit script step. The coding method creates a clear functionality, which can be called objects for each point of the data capture for each tab of the slide control. The use of the ELSIF is still applied within each of these objects. For this workflow, each audit type requires the auditor to enter different data. This scripting method allows for a clear path to the next applicable slider control tab. The continue script step discussed earlier is assigned to the layout script triggers. This demo file comprises of three different layouts, one for each of the three sections. Open any modern app on your device and you'll be presented with an introduction screen. In this case, we have created a layout that the on open script loops through each panel with a slight pause. Slide controls allow the developer to create a slideshow experience, separating each change in element to each tab as a separate section of the timeline. I've called on a technique from my old multimedia days where we were developing complex, interactive CDs. This method is to create a clear, separate frame for the animation timelines, or in this case, tabs in the slide control. Just because you can do everything in one frame or tab doesn't mean you should. Let's watch the demo file and see the introduction slideshow. As you can see, the slide control navigation dots are still visible to better highlight the transition from one slider tab to the next slider tab. The open script loops through the initial sliders with a 0.75 second delay. The introduction ends with the display of the continue button. As mentioned, the last slide includes a continue button for when the user has completed reading the screen. This script can be called either by the return key or the enter keys, or by clicking on the button. Each slide control includes an on-panel switch to set the panel name to a global variable. Any time we perform a script, the current panel is always known. The US data for this demo file came from Brian Dunning's excellent website with a bit of data editing to allow for selection via portals. I've left the scripts in the demo file to show how the data was updated to allow the different sections to appear as portal records. At any time, the order can reselect a field and reselect the data from the portal on that slide control. This is a recording of the audit selection section of the demo file. For simplicity, the demo file has audit types of company, personnel, and locations. The auditor is only ever presented with the one question for each slider control tab. Again, at any time, the auditor can reselect an option from the list. The options for the three different tabs take the auditor to a different set of slide control tabs. All three audit types finish on the same slide control tab to select the correct audit from the portal. This demo file has three questions and an answer panel on the slide control. This illustrates that not all elements, such as the logo at the top, are required to be within the slide control. Included on the layout are breadcrumbs for navigation, showing the number of the current question, the remaining question, 
along with a last tab with the answers. The user can also navigate back to the dollar question via the breadcrumbs. Once finished, the user can submit the audit. This is a recording of the question section of the demo file. Obviously, these three sample questions would not be on a real audit. To recap, point your browser to my website and navigate to the blog section to download this demo file. Thanks for your time, and I hope you're inspired to delve deeper into the world of UX. Feel free to reach out here on the Claris community with any questions or suggestions.